back to the channel guys we're gonna go over the Mivic swap and into a 3G and the basic guides for that and where you can find information so if you go into your browser and you type in Blackheart Motors dot net and I will have the link in the description below it will bring you to uh, this simple page uh, and it's got the 3G right there proudly standing. This is Matt's 3G. Um, and he is the de developer of the Mivic Swap plate. So you want to go up to the Motorsports Division 6G75 Mivic FAQ and click that. It is a awesome guide to understanding everything you need to know about the swap. So you want to scroll down and there are simple questions that people have asked and was answered so let's go to how much does it cost everybody wants to know the cost of the swap so it depends on the uh, price you pay for things and how readily available they are so of course the motor is the bigger ticket item uh, for the swap it's the main reason you're here it's the meat and potatoes so it depends on where you can find a good running motor for not so much money and the other parts that you can find and what have you so roughly you can do it um, for 1500 uh, and up with some bolt on applications so it all really depends on how much everything costs you. Parts. Uh, carparts.com is a great place to look for a motor. You can look for a motor nearby. Also, you can look for row 52. What transmission do I use? So you will definitely have to use the OEM automatic manual transmission for the Eclipse. Your your transmission should be able to work uh, I highly suggest that you upgrade the transmission uh, LS or differential to an LSD uh, limited slip limited slip differential and if you have an automatic then try to uh, source a stall converter uh, that is suitable to your application and if you do have the manual transmission, a clutch is definitely needed for the 300 horsepower and up. How do I control Myvik? So there are a few ways that you can control Myvik. Uh, you can use um, the ECU, but the simplest way for most people that don't understand the ECU is an RPM window switch. There are two RPM window switches that you see here, a JEGS RPM window switch and an MSD. I highly recommend that you use the MSD chip style. Uh, it is easier, it is simple. The JEG one that I used, it was just a hit and miss. It would fluctuate, uh, causing the cams and my coil in the distributor to heat up and kill my car. So uh, I would definitely recommend using the RPM window switch from our uh, from MSD the use of the 2006 and on to so the fourth gen ECU PCM uh, we don't really use it because simple fact that it, it's a lot of wiring you pretty much have to rewire everything um, and it's just a simple drive-by wire uh, setup and our cars are definitely not set up for a drive-by wire if they are set up for uh, a throttle cable tuning for Myvik is more difficult this is incorrect the owners more or less um, definitely have to outsource the tuning but there are definitely people that have tuning uh, experience now we use the, uh, the same tuning software as Evos so if you could find somebody that is very proficient in tuning Evos uh, this would definitely be uh, beneficial to you 
So make sure that you can get your car tuned uh, prior to swapping over or uh, what have you. TX tuning online and on the forums helped me out. So he could possibly help you out. And there are a few people that um, do tune. Can you bypass the Myvix solenoid? No. So if you didn't know, understand Myvix solenoid, um, the Myvix uh, in all bumps up the motion of the intake valve. So the valve out of Myvix only goes down about 50%. And then as soon as it kicks into Myvic, it's going down a lot further than that to compensate for the breathing at higher RPMs and the timing is set for that uh, most of the time. So you do not want to bypass the Myvic. This is why uh, we, we use the adapter plate. So if you go to the top, of the so here's Matt's motor um, that he has of course you can see that he did in fact use and it bolts right up um, the 3G transmission so this guide is for a 3.8 6G 75 Myvic engine conversion from the 2000 to 2005 Mitsubishi Eclipse and 99 to 2003 Mitsubishi Gallant uh, and also to mention the Stratus so parts required list. So uh, you will definitely run across some things that you can change and uh, I encourage you to find new ways to do it. The more ways to do it, the better opportunity that people have. So you want the 6G74 fuel rails and a 6G72 or 6G74 fuel pressure regulator. Or as I did, you can go with a aftermarket fuel pressure regulator so that you can control your fuel pressure. Uh, a modified fuel rail mount tabs for the Myvic lower intake. So I went with the full 6G75 lower and upper intake manifolds and I went with the fuel rails with the modified fuel tabs uh, so that you can mount uh, the fuel rails on the lower intake for the Myvic. So you can also outsource these or unless you are really good at welding you can do that as well but if you have any questions about that just let me know and I will definitely hook you up with my person that I did have make mine and he will be happy to make yours as well. 6G72 crankshaft position sensor with reluctor wheel. Now I definitely will get into that as it has pictures below and you can use the one off of your motor if you take it all apart or you can buy a new one. They are not very hard to find. A 6G72 distributor and a Blackheart motor Myvic distributor adapter plate. We will go over, I will show you exactly where you can buy that, of course, on the same website. A 6G74 power steering bracket, a 6G74 lower timing belt cover, a 6G74 alternator bracket, a 6G72 AC compressor bracket, a 6G74 coolant housing, pipe, uh, heater piping, and sensors, and a 6G72 side mount bracket. Myvic controller, of course that's the RPM window switch, and an aftermarket clutch if you are utilizing the 5-speed 3G transmission. So let's go over the uh, conversion. So a thermostat housing. So the thermostat housing that we use is the 6G74 thermostat housing. It just has the placements for... Um, the heater coil or the heater pipes might add you uh, to go around up and around the distributor placement so if you take out your heat now I don't suggest it if it's a daily driver but if you remove your heat then you can use the stock 6G75 thermostat housing but 
again if you're utilizing your heat then I suggest that you get the 74 thermostat housing as the adapter plate was made for that application also you would want the crossover piping to the water pump as well uh, so you would definitely have, want to dig into your motor and pretty much take it all out as you're down there you can clean it out make sure it's all good to go so the reluctor wheel and sensor so this is the uh, crankshaft sensor this is the reluctor wheel right back here is the little blade not this whole piece this piece comes off of your 3g motor and you want this reluctor wheel as well you can pull off this and place it so you would definitely want to do uh, and this would be a great opportunity to do the timing components as well because you will want to time your motor correctly the intermediate shaft mounts so in the back the intermediate shaft mounts are different so you would want you really want to flatten these out as this one rises above and is offset to this one as on the 3G they are flat so take a grinder back there and you really want to just smooth that out I recommend painting it painting over it puts rust protect, uh, protector on there so you don't get rust spots and it looks as clean as possible so the distributor mounting of course here's the amazing looking distributor plate uh, CNC'd and amazing it looks simple but it's definitely a complex uh, piece of engineering so retaining the OEM distributor mount now before they had the adapter plate it was done the uh, the the distributor was put on the forward head uh, devices the rear head and the OEM position so it definitely makes for a lot cleaner and a lot easier application to use the adapter plate so the adapter plate has instructions again uh, you have a line that goes from the forward um, oil control valve housing all the way to where the rear oil control housing oil control housing was and that's where the distributor will be placed on on the back head um a 674 skip this if you modify the fuel rails again you can definitely uh, use the 6g74 lower intake but i definitely would not recommend it as you're going to have to trim off a lot of this so Going around, uh, getting around that is definitely easier than going over and cutting out all this material just to have clearance. So important polish is good, but when you're cutting away a lot, it is not that good. So again, here is the um, conversion plate. It's pretty simple. Um, these parts are pretty much the basics of what you need and you will run into more uh, as you go so if you want the adapter plate you want to go over here to the store and you can buy it he's got all kinds of different things but you want to go down here and you will see that he has it so um, you have the instructions right there so you could definitely uh, read up on those and here it is uh, the adapter plate and you get the all the hardware and pretty much everything you, you need for for the swap and it, it's pretty simple um, you even got the hardware for it uh, you got the gasket and the oil lines and the hardware uh, so I think that is about it I hope this Hope this video was informational. Um, definitely explore his site. Definitely hit him up uh, and for everything that you need. He's got, he even has other parts for sale, so used parts. Definitely get a shirt and uh, and everything like that. So thank you guys for watching the video.